Hey, it's Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming back. Now I finally get to test drive the Hybrid Maverick in the worst condition. So this is a canceled order, uh, canceled on arrival, and they've turned it into a demo and they're letting me take it for the weekend. So I'm really excited because it has got to be the snowiest day. Uh, the roads are going to be in some of the worst conditions they can be. So I really get to really find out. I told Marie that front wheel drive would be fine in our weather that we've got here and uh, let's find out. Let's hope I'm right. I'm convinced that uh, the intelligent front wheel drive will keep us nice and safe but uh, let's jump right in and find out. So first test, gym bag. So we got the athletic wear and we've got some lunch containers. So the battery obviously on the hybrid takes up some space back here but I still have got a decent amount of under storage seat space so just pull this up so it goes down and that fits right in so so far I'm liking the under seat bins okay so here we are the inside of the Maverick you're at Johnny's Car Care and Reviews we're all weekend we're gonna be testing out this Maverick we're gonna be towing with it we'll be going over bumps not jumps I really want to say bumps and jumps but we won't be going over jumps but we will be towing a little with it uh, see how it tows the four-wheeler the ATV will also be testing it in the snow because right now the conditions are really snowy there's ice underneath the snow and I told Marie I'm hoping I don't get in trouble I'm keeping my fingers crossed we originally were stuck between the EcoBoost all-wheel drive versus the hybrid front-wheel drive and I told Marie it would go just fine so let's she's gonna find out if I'm full of BS and you'll all find out if I'm full of BS but I'm really hoping it's gonna be just fine so you're gonna want to stay tuned for all of that find out if I get in trouble how good this thing is in this actual like a real deal snowstorm and uh, we're gonna take you all over handling interior every button so you're gonna want to like and subscribe uh, because I really want to cover everything I want this to be as helpful as possible I know all of us like I mean pretty much all of us bought Mavericks and you know hadn't test driven it and I've been doing my best to cover every single little thing I felt this is where I could help the most because the vehicle wasn't available originally I was doing this with the Bronco for the same reason I feel I feel bad that we're buying these expense you know these vehicles and we don't know what's going on in the case of the Bronco it's, it's not inexpensive and now that I own one I can say that I feel like it is really really worth the money uh, the joy that I get out of that versus the price uh, it makes it feel inexpensive and it's super expensive like I'm cheap and I, I used to have a budget of max well it was 600 and I went up to I, oh well for a Mustang GT convertible I'll go a little bit over uh, but I got a, a slightly used one so that I could afford it into my budget and now well I've got two Broncos I love it so much eh? forget the budget who cares um, so let's find out if I like the Maverick this much so far I've been pretty impressed but I haven't had any long drives with it so I hope you join me with the drive so far we tested out the back I really like the storage under the seats even though the battery that's a 1.1 kilowatt battery that does rob you of a bit of under seat storage space and I do wish those seats did split 60 40 because of course when you have a baby seat on one side well it'd be nice to still have the bin storage of the other 60% 60 40 split means you know 40% one side the remaining 60% so it's a two-way split so for now it's a one-way split love to see that minor adjustment done for 2023 models a little reward for us waiters but uh, people who are waiting I don't assume we're all waiters if we we bought a, a Maverick but I mean we're waiting we're not no, that's not our profession so let's just say uh, let's hit it let's put the pedal to the metal on this obviously a whole lot less today because well there's there's ice on the road um, but we will get to driving it uh, really properly so let's uh, let's give her as you can see the tow trucks out uh, visibility is good in this I actually had to navigate and kind of dodge that toy tow truck because uh, I'm not in a toy truck he's in a tow truck and some would call this a toy truck but it is not a toy truck uh, it's got 1500 pounds of payload for the back uh, it gets the job done at least in regards to work loading work now it does pull a whole lot less 2,000 pounds and we'll find out if it pulls and toes decently later but for now let's just test it out in the snow here out of traffic see how it does so far I do like the visibility because that tow truck did cut the corner took up my lane of course not his fault there's snow on the ground so who knows whose lane is whose whose lane is it anyways uh, so so far visibility definite pass I do like 
you know, people have been saying that this is loud. I'll let you judge for yourself. Of course, the fan's on, so I'll turn, turn off the fan there and stop talking for a moment. These are the noisiest conditions you'll come across, you know. We've got pretty strong winds, we've got snow slapping up against the vehicle, and we've got snow underneath the tires. And I'm not finding this that, I'm, not, I'm finding it not very loud. Uh, insula, the, the sound deadening on this is good. Now the suspension though, when you hit bumps, you definitely do hear the suspension. There's no hiding, on, hiding that whatsoever. But I'll let that slide because this does have a 1500, payload, 1500 pound payload, which is extremely impressive. Uh, that is an excellent, excellent payload. Do remember though, this is a unibody construction. That means it's not a big, huge, thick truck frame with a body bolted on top of it. Uh, bolted or welded on top. This is kind of, you know, monocoque or you can think of it as one big old piece with doors slapped on. So I definitely don't, can't believe that this will off-road quite as well as a Ranger or a Bronco, of course, and I, I think it's lower stance, obviously, makes it pretty obvious to most that this is no off-roading machine. I think it's fine for doing some light uh, field work, uh, going into the forest, cutting a bit of wood. Uh, obviously, if I'm going into a forest, I would not get this front wheel drive hybrid. I think for farmers who want to use this kind of as a transport vehicle on the ranch or on the farm, I think it's going to be perfect to get an all wheel drive EcoBoost so it can better handle the mud, the ruts, uh, the you know wet, soggy fields and whatnot. But I think as a daily commuter, this is fantastic. It's, you know, I did have a 2013 Ford Focus. I was traveling about 40 minutes per day back and forth to work. And that manual Focus front wheel drive, intelligent front wheel drive, did a great job of you know putting the right amount of power to the right wheel to keep my bad driving in a straight line just the same. So I'm being forced here to drive on some relatively slippery snow here on the left because I want to respect that middle line that we can barely see but so far I do feel that this is a good safe vehicle I'm confident in telling Mavi Pia that she could drive this all winter that she'd be safe you know it is it's family here I obviously want her to be safe and well taken care of I also want her to save because uh, she didn't want to go to the EcoBoost because of the fuel economy. Now I did explain to her that on the highway fuel economy, not much of a difference between hybrid and EcoBoost. So if you're doing 90% highway, you know, get the EcoBoost if you want the all-wheel drive. For now, it's front-wheel drive only for the hybrid. And you know, do I expect an all-wheel drive Maverick hybrid? I do. I don't expect it at all or in any way for 2023. That'd be an incredibly fast turnover time. Um, I think that's the type of thing that's gonna they'll bring maybe for uh, you know the second version usually comes between five normally the platform or the whole model changes every five to max eight years eight years is more like on the Mustang but when they do change the model for the Maverick that's when I would think they would introduce the all-wheel drive hybrid because financially it makes a ton of sense because people who currently have any kind of Maverick will obviously really desire getting the all-wheel drive hybrid. And right now Ford also doesn't need, you know, there's the benefit later on of getting people to switch their current Mavericks, but they certainly don't need more people wanting more Mavericks. That's not the direction we need to go in right now. We just got to get these things delivered. I want to get mine in my hands. This is I was really kind of almost sad no, I said, not getting to the Bronco tonight. I really want to drive the Bronco in the snow, but I said, you know what? I promised the community a weekend of fun in the Maverick. Fun, you know, full test, poking and prodding everything on this Maverick. And I said, I got to do it. So here we are. And this so far, you know, I'll give you updates. But so far, I don't think I'll have to talk too much longer on how it drives in the snow. When you're not hitting, because it's great, and when you're not hitting big bumps like I was in the parking lot earlier, that hard suspension that's made to handle well and take a lot of weight does handle very well. I've already tested that in previously, but it's comfortable. You know, if you're on a somewhat smooth road, you're not gonna hear the suspension, and it's gonna be comfortable. Personally, for the price, 
this isn't a Lincoln. This isn't, you know, a $60,000, fifty to $70,000 Lincoln or more. An Aviator is quite expensive, uh, but fantastic. The, the level of sound ending is great for this vehicle. Now, in regards to steering, I find the steering quite responsive. Now, this is electronic power-assisted steering. So, they did a good job of giving it a real feel to it. And it's got a bit of stiffness, so it doesn't feel too loose in my hands. Now, the steering wheel itself, this isn't a luxury package. It doesn't have the leather wrapped steering wheel. So, guess what? The steering wheel is kind of hard, and it's hard. It's hard. And let's, it, it kind of feels plasticky. Um, it's not my favorite. I would either, you know, if I wasn't getting a luxury package, I would have maybe the steering wheel wrapped for my personal taste, just for feeling not for you know how it's gonna look because it won't look great with the cover on it but just so that it feels a little less hard but uh, you know I look forward to the leather wrapped steering wheel Ford does those well now I'm in a snowstorm and what's really cool is I'm not driving I'm driving the speed limit actually yeah, let's say I'm driving the speed limit. I'm definitely not driving below the speed limit and I haven't had any worries so far. Now let's see about those automatic high beams. Yeah, automatic high beams are on, so now I won't. I always feel pretty awful when I forget to turn my high beams off in previous years. I'll get home and I'll still feel bad about it. And right now it's pretty cool. These automatic high beams will protect everyone else in another lane. And when you know, you're know you on a really tight two way, uh, it also can help increase your safety. Now, talking about getting your Maverick. If you currently, I have seen, and I know Ford's not talking about this, and, but I have seen you know my friend's order that was supposed to be built at the end of January, got pushed to middle, uh, middle 15th to 20th of February, and then it got pushed all the way out to May. Then it backed up to the 15th to the 20th of uh, March for arrival because it's going to be built, you know, uh, about around the 10th of March. So that's a simple XLT EcoBoost all wheel drive, no luxury package, nothing other than the 4K. And he got pushed, uh, and vehicles getting pushed by three months so far from what I've been able to see from everyone's intel that they put into the channel and, uh, well, builds that I follow. I would think that the seven pin, the four, the four pin connector, just a hitch, not a problem, but the seven pin uh, causes trouble. And it did cause trouble also on the Bronco. And guess what? The Bronco has a seven pin connector. Uh, it's actually caused a lot of trouble on the Bronco in the past. And now on the Bronco, of course, there's also the wrap. You'll want to avoid that. And Well, I still feel soft top will get you there faster because I've talked about the numbers they can build for you know even if they're getting 300 hard tops per day they're building 416 uh, give or take Broncos per day if they stick to 12,500 per month in December they built 12,900 so they can still they will still pass more soft tops soft tops will still jump you on the list and that's the type of math that I do to figure out what's wrong uh, or not necessarily what's wrong but what's holding up Mavericks so the 4k holding up Mavericks Copilot 360 I don't suggest to anyone that they remove it unless they more or less didn't really want it in the first place and just figured well you know it's not very expensive I'll get it just in case uh, it helps me with resale Copilot is a good safety issue one of our Broncos doesn't have it the other one does and it's it does keep a lot of people safe especially if you text and drive I certainly hope no one's doing that here or that you're gonna hopefully stop soon because that's really quite quite dangerous for yourself and others but the lane keep assist does certainly help now I've driven Fords with of course I have a Ford the Bronco and it has the blind spot detection and it doesn't scream every time someone drives by so front wheel drive the only thing is if the tires are spinning you keep going straight so I let go of the pedal and didn't just slam on the brakes I just let go of the pedal and let the wheels take me in the correct the, the correct direction these conditions are really bad uh, they're a good mix of snow that will fit your fill your tread wear and some ice too so you know if I Stop on the brakes, the anti-lock brakes, 
do keep me in a straight line. They won't allow uh, your braking to make the vehicle slide left or right. So we'll see where we're at for fuel economy after going up this hill, uh, because right now, a good part of that highway was going downhill. So I've got, you know, it's not a correct reading. I've got not representative, 4.9 liters per 100 kilometers. But once I get up this hill, I'll probably be to some, around something more reasonable. By the time I get home, I'll probably be about 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers, like I was the other day. Do remember the hybrids are better in town, quite a bit better in town. Uh, and for a truck, it's unbelievably impressive how good the fuel economy of this is in town, in the city. But on the highway, uh, not a huge difference. Not a so it is better than the EcoBoost, obviously. The EcoBoost, you'll probably be doing about you know one to two liters per hundred kilometers more. Um, so the difference between say 33, maybe 33 miles per gallon versus 37 miles per gallon. That, handles the train tracks quite well. Now let's say I were to stop on this hill on snowy conditions and start accelerating. Definitely not gonna win any drag races. <laughs> this it's kind of a steep hill and these are slippery conditions but no I'm not gonna win any drag races but the front wheel drive will get you up a hill if you're in traffic in the city and you've got to stop and you're on a hill you're gonna be fine do keep in mind though I've got real winter tires on this so these are not the factory tires you cannot get winter tires from factory so you've got to buy those apart if you want to really handle conditions like these rather well So I'll let you be the judge whether this vehicle's too noisy. That is one definite big hit it's gotten from a lot of reviewers. But I really don't mind. Maybe I'm just, I don't know, you can tell me I'm not picky enough in the comment section. If you're finding the noise of this vehicle horrible, let me know in the comment section. I've got the fan going, which you'll hear a bit in the mic. I can't help that, otherwise the windshield's gonna freeze right up. Uh, but the en electric engine, sorry, the uh, electric motor and gasoline engine, the ICE, has been turning on. Like right now, we're running on the combustion engine as well as the electric, en uh, ele electric motor. Sorry, I'm, I'm true my words. Uh, these conditions, this slow driver ahead of me is uh, throwing me off my game. But I don't find the transition all that noisy. And let's say I were to put the pedal to the metal. Once again, not winning any drag races because, well, well, because the, the technology of the vehicle is not letting me spin the tires to the point where I kick it into the ditch or kick it into traffic. But definitely happy with those automatic high beams available on all Mavericks. So I'm not blinding anyone because I would have forgotten my high beams on. They're on on the highway and I would have definitely forgotten them. The guy in front of me would have probably been bothered by my high beams uh, and not just by me following it excessively and unpolitely behind him. So I'll give him a little bit of space. I don't want to be that guy. So I will test the radio, get back to you on the radio because um, I do want to properly test the radio with these outside conditions. But once again, blowing snow sounds great. Handles great in the corners, comfortable, um, not having any complaints. The seat is actually really comfortable. Um, I'm as comfortable in the seat on this as I am my Bronco, except for one, one issue, one issue. Uh, I'd like the seat to actually be longer. I'm not a tall guy. I mean, you know, I'm not six foot, um, you know, 5'10 without the boots on. And still, there's quite a bit of space. There's almost, there's about five inch, four, four or five inches between my the bend in my knee and the end of the seat. So, small thing. Now, of course, they got to make these seats for everyone, but they're comfortable. I'm held well in place. I feel like I could definitely rip it into a corner. And it's not just about driving fast into a corner. If you're hauling, uh, obviously, you're going to be thrown left and right a little bit more because of the weight of the trailer. Uh, and the sway of the vehicle, there'll be more vehicle sway. Now there is technology on this to prevent 
uh, to reduce a lot of vehicle sway. It's uh, torque vectoring, or what Ford is now calling, um, you know, uh, curve control is part of it. So this has curve control and torque vectoring. You go, basically, you go into a corner and that front right wheel uh, will brake slightly to help when, you know, when you're under, you know, more extreme conditions to make it so that there's a left, uh, less of a left or right sway in the vehicle. But uh, this is uh, generally not the greatest road and it is handling it quite well. Okay, so we've made it up a hill. We went down part of a highway. We went up a major hill. It's cold. It is snowing. It's currently minus 12 degrees Celsius. Took a, quite a big bump that used to really kill my Mustang. No issues whatsoever in the fuel economy for the, these conditions. Considering we did a highway, not bad at all. We're at seven liters per hundred kilometers. And remember, I did stop on a big hill, stomped on the gas. I haven't exactly been careful. This isn't uh, my best effort run. I do like on the XLT, I, I like the little digital temperature gauge. It's telling me, you know, I'm asking for 29 degrees Celsius. Uh, so you're not just picking a color and how big of that color's bar, you know, the red bar, blue bar, and whether it's a small bar, big bar, none of that nonsense. You actually have a nice little digital reading of the 29 degrees so that's thermostatic meaning it's gonna do whatever it needs to do to stay at 29 I don't expect air conditioning to turn on anytime soon that's for sure so we're now at over 60 and nice it's not too loud it's dead really quiet in electric mode and you know when you're in electric mode because the needle is going to be in the green battery section it's going to be right on the zero and when you let go of the pedal it's going to go below the zero to let you know that you're now recharging you're helping to recharge that 1.1 kilowatt battery not huge and hoping one day that these vehicles will be able to replace those batteries with a better battery technology. Let's say you buy your Maverick now. I look forward to a future and I, I hope that we'll have a future where, you know, for example, uh, aluminum graphene batteries, uh, if, aluminum gra uh, if, the, if we could put in an aluminum graphene battery back in there, if the technology comes through, uh, we could be driving this most of the time in electric mode. Now, people will often ask and have asked, you know, when is it in electric and when is it in gas mode? You don't, first of all, you don't have any control over that other than going light on the pedal. Uh, the vehicle will take care of everything itself. You don't have to plug it in. You just drive and enjoy. And anytime you let go of the gas pedal, like here's a stop sign. I'm gonna let go of the gas pedal well in advance and I'm gonna use, you know, just let the vehicle charge itself. Now I'm gonna test out L, so L, driving in low mode, and I do believe that when I'm in L, when I let go, obviously it's going to slow down the vehicle more, and well, theoretically, it would only make sense that it charges the battery more because there's more resistance being created, more you know friction, you could say. So doesn't show on the camera it looks like it's the bumpiest ride ever and this road is very bumpy but it's comfortable in the truck so yeah if you're in low mode it's been tested the needle drops much further down on the green battery meaning and it's you know it helps with the braking so even less chances of touching the brakes but if you do drive the tra on the transmission dial there is an L you hit that and you're gonna charge your battery more and you're gonna get more braking so you can save on the brake pads do make sure to use the brake pads once in a while, otherwise in this kind of weather, the discs will rust right up. Which reminds me, I need to drive that 07 Escape this weekend, otherwise I'll need to change, change the discs on it before it ever gets sold. So once again, let go of the acceleration pedal and it charges up the battery more. Looks like Marie has some friends over this evening and 
I, they still left me a place. Right, I feel important. I got my own spot. Oh, here's an issue. An all-wheel drive would get up this icy driveway and my Lincoln MKZ often couldn't get up this driveway. So if you've got a steep driveway and you don't salt it, you might be getting yourself into one of these situations. Oh, oh and I was all excited that they left me my spot and I won't even be able to get into it. Let's, uh, let's try one more time. I've got my, my reputation here. Not worried about you guys. You guys are real nice. I'm worried about my reputation with Marie Pierre. Put a pedal to the metal. So obviously studded tires would be a blessing if you've got a driveway with a slant that's gonna be iced like my parents. They've got almost a kilometer of driveway. I don't I don't know if this would make it up. Uh, right now, definitely not. Um, but with studded tires, no issues at all. Now those main roads weren't quite as icy as my driveway and that's why we made it up. So thanks for bearing with me. We'll uh, be covering more very shortly. So like and subscribe because this thing's gonna go through the ringer. It's gonna get every test I can think of. And please drop me some comments. Let me, tell me what you need to see out of this vehicle.